So I'm speaking at a Maker Faire in New York in a, a couple days, and um, I wanted to get around and see some of the Maker projects that people are uh, building, you know? And one of the most fun ones is building your own drone. I mean, everybody wants a drone, right? Anyways, I'm gonna talk to uh, the founder of Aerohive about his little uh, drone project and what he's doing with Wi-Fi. Who are you? My name is Adam Conway. Um, I'm VP of Product Management at Aerohive Networks. I, uh, and I guess I love robots. And so uh, tell me a little bit about how you got into this world. I got in, so I, I've always, um, well, I, I'm a mechanical engineer. I studied mechanical engineering undergrad, and that is the wrong degree to have in, in the Bay Area. Um, nobody, nobody wants you to make mechanical things anymore. Well, now they do again, but, yeah. uh, but back you know, 15 back. years yeah. ago, it is, it is. <laughs> And uh, so I, um, I got into networking. I worked at Cisco um, and then uh, worked at a few other networking companies uh, and eventually um, helped, uh, helped out Aerohive in the early days, um, helped build them into um, the company they are today. Uh, you know, we're a Wi-Fi uh, routing and switching company, but with a twist, we, we are managed from the cloud, um, which enables people to easily set up networks, but then also um, gives them an amazing amount of visibility into what's happening uh, on the, in, the, in the network. And you help uh, set up Wi-Fi networks in hospitals and big buildings and enterprises and stuff like that, pr probably even sports stadiums or something like that. We, we have and that's where you those. need the kind of management. You need to see where the crowd is and be able to move things around, right? Yeah, as you get into you know hundreds or thousands of uh, access points and then thousands or tens of thousands of users, you've got, you've, you really have to understand what's happening on the network from the, the whole whole picture perspective, but then be able to drill into a specific user who's calling you on the help desk asking for asking you to fix their problem. So it's it's that ability to do that remotely from any you know from anywhere in the world is is the power that cloud enabled networking brings. So that's your professional world. Yes. Uh, this is uh, your personal world. <laughs> so, yes. Yes. So and how did you get into robots and, and hovercraft or uh, uh, drones? I guess. Yeah, and I can't tell you where my love of robots come from. I, um, I, I I'm not sure. It probably is a. Um, it's one of those things where a psychologist who set me on there set me on their their couch to to get that, but. Um, but in particular, um, you know, about two or three years ago, uh, this this drone uh, open source operating or open source uh, uh, platform came out. Um, Chris Anderson's company, 3D Robotics, built it, so I've had to build a drone. So uh, I built I built this drone, um, and uh, you know, I built other robots as well, uh, you know, 3D printers, that kind of stuff. Um, but this drone, uh, you know, got it to a certain point where it was flying well. And then my professional and personal life collided, uh, and we actually put access, we put a Wi-Fi, one of our Wi-Fi devices, on this on this device, which was uh, very cool. We were able to basically fly it in a park, provide Wi-Fi access, uh, you know, from of our corporate network. So it actually had a VPN tunnel going back to our corporate network over 4G, and we could sit there and check our mail and do that sort of stuff uh, while flying this. And we mostly went off without a hitch. Uh, it turns out that uh, our access points interfere with GPS, yeah. which um, this depends on to fly stably. So it was an unstable flight, ended in a crash, but that's all right. Um, uh, it's taken a couple, we, I've, I've already lost a couple of routers doing this. So uh, tell me, this was hand built. You built this at Tech Shop over, over here in San Francisco, right? Uh, the one in San Jose, yeah, exactly. Okay. And so tell me what you uh, put on here. So let, let's start with the processor. What, what yeah, so this is the 3D Robotics uh, Autopilot. Um, it's, um, and, and if I look at most of the work that went into this thing, the guys at 3D Robotics did, did the real work. And this um, is uh, Chris Anderson, the Chris Anderson that was the uh, editor of Wired, yeah. started this new company. Yeah, started it, yeah, started with a guy named Jordi Munoz, uh, and, uh, um, he, um, and they, they build these things. And I just I bought one, um, and I built this drone around it. And the, I, whole, the whole drone costs what, in terms of parts, about six hundred dollars. Uh, six hundred bucks. Yeah, is that okay. how much I spent on it? Um, a lot of time, uh, you know, getting the autopilot. This is an earlier version of the autopilot that was not as 
turnkey as the current ones are. Um, yeah. And then I built mine with you know laser cut materials because I crash it a lot. I, I'm not very good at flying it as it turns out. So uh, I'm able to replace all the parts anytime I want, or if I want to add something to it, I can add something to it and still keep it as a pretty clean build. Even though it doesn't look that clean with all the wires all over the place, this is this is pretty clean when it comes to <laughs> home built drones. Yeah. So there's a whole community of people who are building drones like this yeah. by, by themselves, right? Yeah. There's a there's a, a thing called DIY drones, which you know a huge community of people are involved in. It mostly centers around this 3D robotics uh, platform, but there's all sorts of autopilots out there. Yeah. Um, and, and in fact, I, you know, I'm working with a. Uh, um, uh, a friend of mine, uh, a guy named uh, Mike Davis, who, who actually built an Android-based autopilot. So that's, of course, the next thing is to stick the Android-based autopilot on here and, and get that going. And actually, that is a much more meaningful thing from a Wi-Fi perspective, because um, then we can actually control the drone via Wi-Fi, which opens up so many opportunities to manage it over the internet, all that kind of thing. So. Yeah. Uh, you know, the guys over at, um, uh, the, 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 some of the Google guys got that and they gave me their old broken Nexus device, uh, yeah. which you can see here, and, uh, um, and uh, the Android team, I think, gets the idea of drones. So they, um, they gave this to me and uh, I'm gonna, I can fly it on my, on my device without having to worry about, um, uh, without having to worry about breaking it again. Yeah, these motors are what half half horsepower brushless motors. Yeah, about a half horsepower. Uh, so they run, um, and, and they don't usually run at full power. Um, when you do run at full power, it uh, moves very quickly. Um, yeah. You can go about probably forty to fifty miles an hour. These motors are way too big, as it turns out, for this for this quad. But uh, what it, what it's enabled me to do is put a big payload on it. So I've been able to put um, a, a uh, the the um, our BR one hundred, which is a wireless device we have mount it on here, power it from the device, and then provide that Wi-Fi access in the 4G backhaul. Now, how long can one of these stay in the air? So this airframe, if I get 15 minutes, I'm lucky. That's, yeah. And that's just hovering. Uh, if I'm trying to do anything aggressive, it's far less than that. If you want to make a viable Wi-Fi platform uh, where it replaces a cell tower or it can stay up indefinitely, it needs to be an airplane uh, airframe. Uh, and if you, as soon as you get to, I think, about 90 minutes, it becomes possible to run two of them and then keep keep Wi-Fi coverage over over a location. Yeah. Uh, or or have it follow a group of people. Uh, if you carry uh, another device with you, you can actually give it your GPS coordinates and it can follow you around and, and provide you Wi-Fi access. Which is it, this is interesting. My son's going to be a police officer, and it, you know, uh, instead of having a helicopter watching a a crime scene or something like that, that's a very expensive platform. That would burn and fuel in one hour what this entire project cost you to build, right? Indeed, so, indeed. So yeah. you could probably buy three or four of these and keep them up. How, how long does it take to recharge the batteries? Uh, typically about an hour and a half, uh, although you know, these batteries are pretty light. Yeah. Um, just uses a, uh, um, a lithium polymer battery. You, know, so a lot, you can bring 10 of those with you, replace any time you need, uh, and that's not a big deal. These, these weigh about, um, uh, about a half a pound. And you, you, on here, you have a video transmitter, right? Yeah, I have a little video transmitter. The video camera's not on here right now, but it can transmit analog video back. And, and that's another issue. That's where stuff like an Android platform comes in, where you can actually get IP video. And yeah. you can have a really combined interface. And, and that's, I think, when things get much more interesting, when you can be on Wi-Fi, you can be on LTE, you can control it, you can, uh, um, uh, you can um, provide Wi-Fi, or you can just control it with Wi-Fi. Yeah. Well, I'm seeing people uh, flying all sorts of cameras around with, with uh, uh, either quadcopters or up to octocopters now. Mm -hmm. Chase Jarvis rented an octocopter that cost, a, I don't know, $1,000 to rent for the day, and he had mm -hmm. a goggle on, and he could see where the thing was flying and stuff like that. Pretty interesting stuff. Uh, all the parts you built over Tech Shop? I did. So the Tech Shop is, uh, we, we've had them on our show before, but they build a... Uh, they have a whole factory of where you can rent all sorts of machines to cut through things and laser cut things. And yeah, it, it's um, it's a membership. Um, it's sort of like a sports club membership, but you, hopefully you go as opposed to um, <laughs> you're in, or a, a fitness club. I'm sorry. Um, the you go there and they have millions of dollars of equipment, you know, stuff you could never afford. So, you know, laser, uh, you know, laser cutter, which basically is a computer controlled laser. I could never afford that. Um, so being able to go use theirs to make this, um, use, uh, I use their mills to make the, make the aluminum pieces. 
Um, they have water jet cutters. They have whole, all kinds of stuff. It's a very yeah. cool place. Cool. Yeah. Well, cool. Um, Aero Hive people who need Wi-Fi for their enterprise, their big buildings, can yeah. can find you on uh, aerohive.com. Yep, yep. R routers, switches, um, access points, and of course, managed from the cloud. Yeah. And you have somebody uh, come out and help uh, figure out where you need to put these uh, Wi-Fi devices because. I know at, at like La Web, they really had a lot of problems getting uh, enough Wi-Fi coverage for all the people that were there, and they fi finally figured out, oh, we b we better have a wireless engineer come out and actually know what they're do how they aim these things and how to tune them and how to keep crosstalk from happening and all that fun stuff. I'm, I'm glad you asked that. There, there's something very cool we can do. Uh, so we have two ways of doing this. One is yes, we have um, we work with people that can come out and, and you know visit uh, visit your site and do a, a site survey, as they call it. Um, also on the web, we have a free planner, which allows you to drop in a floor plan, and you can drop in the access points and see how coverage works. Um, very cool, uh, very cool capability. And if you don't have a floor plan, you can just go to Google Maps and trace your building, and it turns it into a floor plan. Or you so can fly a, your drone around. I can fly the drone around <laughs> and uh, just tell you. I'll, I'll be over there in a few minutes. Uh, my drone will be over there in a few minutes, and I'll tell you how many access points you need. Yeah, well, exactly. Rackspace has a huge mall in San Antonio. And so we would just fly this uh, down the mall, and then you'll tell us how many access points we need. Exactly, exactly. Awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, should we try to fly this thing? Uh, if, if, if you dare. Yeah, I don't know if you were that.